you ever wonder why the Word of God makes you so angry? Have you ever thought about why you become so angry and, and why the Bible has such a negative effect on you? I find it quite interesting that there's people that can talk about everything negative and detestable under the sun. But when you mention the scriptures, when you speak about the word of God, they become angry. Even though they say that the word of God is fake, it's not real, it's make-believe it still has such a negative effect on them. Have you ever wondered why you become so angry when someone what even sounds like the Bible, you become enraged and you say, don't preach to me and uh, that's a fake book or it's been plagiarized or you just go off on a tangent, an angry tangent against God against the Bible, against the church, anything that appears to be holy, anything that seems to be of righteousness sake, you become angry. Have you ever wondered why? Most people would say it's because it's the devil in you. But I'm not going to go the devil route. I'm going to show you why the word of God have such a negative impression upon you and why you become so angry and enraged. I want to start with a scripture and I'm not going to be before you too long. The scripture is taken from Hebrews, the fourth chapter, reading the 12th verse. And it says, for the word of God is quick. Now that word quick means to be made alive. So the word of God is alive. It's spirit. And it's alive. So now you have a live force that is having such an effect on your spiritual man your soul, your spirit, to the point where your internals, your insides, meaning your spirit, start warring with the spirit of God. And it causes you to become so enraged and out of character. So you have this live force that's entering into the ears of a dead body, the walking dead. The Bible says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I remember when I first started going to church, and I was a player. I was a big-time player. I had all kind of women or girlfriends or whatever you want to call it. I was in my 20s. I was feeling myself, fresh out the military, looking good, and females were going crazy over me, so... I lived a very adulterous or fornicative, if there's such a word, lifestyle. I was fornicating. And I committed adultery because I've slept with the wives of other men in my player days. And I remember going to church. The preacher knew nothing about me, never seen me before in my life. And he stood up and he started preaching. Now, the choir sounded good. I mean, you could stand up, clap your hands, you know, try to sing along with the choir if you know the words of the song. 
Then they took up the offering and they went through their little formalities. And then when he got to the preaching, I'm sitting there listening. And then when he started getting to the word, the meat of the word, he started messing with my life. He didn't know me. But the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So you may have the motive, for example, in my mind, in church, I'm thinking when I leave here, I'm going by Ann's house. Ann was the young lady I was seeing. And I already had my plans mapped out. You know how you sit in church and you start thinking about what you're going to do when you leave church. So my motive and intent was to go by Ann's house. But the Most High had another plan for me. He was working on me. Right? And I had no idea. So the preacher was up there preaching and he was preaching about my life. It seemed like everything he said was about me. It's like he was, it's like the word of God was looking right through me. Knew me like a book. And I became angry. And a lot of times when you hear the word of God, you tend to become angry with the messenger because of the words that's being spoken through him. So I was mad. I was angry. Because he's making me feel bad about how I was living. Me doing the things that I enjoyed doing. I enjoyed fornicating. It was good. I enjoyed sleeping with another man's wife. Not so much as the fact that it was another man's wife. It was the fact that I was with this woman. That looked good. So I'm getting mad because he's in my business. And I've heard of situations where the preacher got up and he was preaching about shacking up, living together before marriage. And the woman in the church became convicted. So she went home and told her living boyfriend that they can't do this no more. The living boyfriend became angry. He's receiving second-handed word of God. He didn't hear the preacher, but she went home and told him what the preacher said. Do went to the church looking for the preacher. He wanted to beat the preacher up <laughs> for, for preaching against shacking up because he's thinking the preacher got in her head and started messing up his game. So he went to the church to talk to the preacher. Next thing you know, he's in church. That's how powerful and alive and it's fast, it's quick. But this is talking about how alive and powerful and how sharp the word of God is. And in many cases, when people hear the word of God and it convicts their heart, they become angry. And after that anger is gone, see, the word of God works inside you even while you sleep. That's subconscious and the word rings in the back of your head. You're always thinking about what the preacher said. Or what somebody said that was witnessing to you. It always come back in, in its due time. Because the word is never sent out void. Because the results of that word being sent out. is going to come back. It's going to bear fruit. In that hearer of the word. So. The scripture said for the word of God is quick. In other words it's alive. And powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the Most High knows what you're going to do before you do it. But one thing He does not do, He does not violate your free will. You will be held accountable for every choice and decision 
that you make in your body. Now, I want to read another scripture from Romans, the 8th chapter. Reading the 11th verse. And it reads as follows. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Again, quicken means to be made alive. So I'm going to reread that, and instead of using quicken, I'm going to use to be made alive or to make alive. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also make alive your mortal body, or better yet, become alive within you. It quickens your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. That's the word of God. That's how powerful the word of God is. And that's why you become so angry when the word of God is spoken. But that's only God's grace working on you. You still have the ultimate choice and decision. So a lot of times people think that we're judging you. And then they'll say, only God can judge me. No. The Bible says, know ye not that the saints shall judge the world. Know ye not that the saints, the people of Yah, will judge the world. So no, only God does not judge you. The people of God that is filled with the Holy Spirit can also and will also judge you. Not condemning you because you condemn yourself by the choices and decisions you make. But we're going to tell you right from wrong. We're going to tell you truth from error. Because believe it or not, there are still truth tellers in the church. See, the churches of today is full of the devil. It's like the devil had taken over the minds and the bodies of the preachers. And you have many false teachers and false preachers that are now becoming clergy. And they're able to work out their demonic agenda through the church. But the Bible tells us to be wise as a serpent but harmless as a dove. That's why it's important to know the word of God. Instead of resisting God's word, know the word of God. Know what it says. And don't be so quick to become offended by the word of God. It's only here to help you. It's only there to make you become alive. Because you think you're alive, but you're not. See? So the final scripture I want to read is taken from Ephesians, the second chapter, reading the first to the fifth verse, and it reads as follows. And you has he quickened, in other words, made alive, and you who he has quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin. And see, this is what I meant by when I said you're the walking dead. You're walking around in a corpse with no life. I'm not referring to the breath of life that was breathed in you to be able to function in this plane of existence. But I'm speaking about being alive in Christ. Having the spirit of Yah in you. That's speaking to your heart, your conscience. And that's why it's so easy for men and women to do evil, to sex traffic, to rape, to murder, to rob, because they have no conscience. And you, has he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein 
in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversations in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And I told you about how I was before I started going to church. And I explained how I felt when I heard the preacher. But after hearing that word and after being angry and looking at him with the evil eye, he didn't do nothing to me. He just preached the word. He didn't know me. But God knew me. And that message was for me. And guess what? Next week, I was back in church. I must have loved punishment from God because I kept going back. And then I started going to Sunday school. And then I started going to Bible study and YPWW, which is another form of Bible study for young people. And then I joined the choir. So I must have loved the punishment of God. But in reality, God was only punishing the sin that was in me. Convicting my heart of the wrong that I did. So yeah, I became angry too. I was like a lot of y'all. So I know exactly where you're coming from. I'm going to read that third verse again. Among whom also we all had our conversations in time past. In other words, I went through that too. In the lust of our flesh. We were fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. The fourth verse says, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened or made alive, quickened us together with Christ. And then it says, by grace ye are saved. So that's why you become so angry. Because the word is cutting you. Because you're convicted by the word. You're convicted by the, the, the deeds or the things that you do and you're not ready or refuse to give your life to the Lord. So, if you ever wonder why you become so angry and hostile toward the word and lash out, or you hear any uh, video or listen to a video regarding the scriptures, you're quick to down, thumb down that video. You ever wonder why? Yeah, it could be the devil in you. But it also could be the word that's convicting your heart. And it's having that type of effect on you. Because like the scripture says, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So feedback, tell me what you think until next time. I'm fearless.